But so I came up with a definition which might be helpful. A startup is a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. That, that's really tight. Would you like to open that yes. up for us? Or... I, I will, I, but it was designed to be like, you could say it in a sentence. So number one is, I used to love startups. I did eight of them, um, mostly because I was unemployable in a large company. So I, I had to do startups. A startup is a temporary organization, which means the goal of a startup is not to become a startup. What's the goal of a startup? To grow. To grow, to become a large company. So I put the word temporary organization just to remind ourselves that the goal is not to stay as a startup. Designed to search. Boy, that's interesting. I thought the goal of a startup is to, to grow and sell stuff or get sold or whatever. Actually, the goal of a startup, that early phase, is to answer a bunch of questions about your business model. It's a big idea. The goal in the early days is not to hire people and execute like you think you're correct. In fact, the data says while you think you're a visionary, there's enough data across the world now to say you're not a visionary, you're hallucinating. Big idea. And so therefore, instead of wasting your time, we want you to search for a business model. Who are the customers? What's the right price? What's the right feature set? What's the right product market fit? And the way I want to do this is I want to get some evidence that this thing is the right business model, and I'll use MVPs to do that. Uh, but I'm looking for something that's repeatable. That is, I could do the same thing on Monday that works on Wednesday that works next week and scalable. That means if for an input of, you know, 100 lira, I might get 200 lira back. Or for an input of a certain amount of dollars, I'll acquire so many customers. Uh, and so that's what the definition means. A startup is a temporary organization designed to search for repeatable and scalable business model. I think it's worth repeating. Startup is a temporary organization in search of repeatable and scalable business model. Uh, it's worth thinking about also. Another important component of the Lean Startup is uh, the pivot. When do you decide to pivot? I, I think that most of the entrepreneurs I know have this emotional attachment to their idea, to their product. How could they possibly let go? Um, maybe they're leaving a diamond in the rough, uh, or maybe it is the right time to move. How do they know it's time to pivot? So first, let's define what a pivot is, right? And, and so, um, you know, um, a good number of entrepreneurs, particularly founding CEOs, think a pivot is simply, I changed my mind. That's not a valid uh, definition of a pivot. It, it might explain entrepreneurs with attention deficit disorder, but, uh, but it, it really isn't a, a good definition. My definition of a pivot is a pivot is a substantive change to one or more of the business model components. Again, that seems fancy and complicated, but if you really think about it, a pivot says, I've gotten out of the building and discovered that my customers aren't, um, you know, men 28 to 35 in Istanbul. My customers might actually be, you know, broader in the whole Middle Eastern region. That's a pretty big insight, and therefore you'll pivot who your customer segment is. Or you might decide that your revenue model, it's not freemium. Oh my gosh, we figured out we can actually charge for the product. That's a substantive pivot. And so you have found something about specifically about a part of the business model that you need to change. The other piece about the pivot, by the way, is that what we kind of enforce is you can't just go out and say, here's what I heard yesterday and change the whole company. In fact, I have a 72 hour hold on any pivots for founders. You're not allowed to go from your brain to your mouth for 72 hours or else you jerk your company around in a very bad way. It's so they're sleeping over the idea. You have to sleep on it for three days. Talk to your board, talk to some advisors, talk to some mentors, but ultimately you really need to think about um, uh, whether you want to pivot, because these are, these are real changes to either engineering or sales or whatever. The pivot, though, does something else, and it's not intuitively obvious. In the old days, 20th century, and maybe some, some of you were still practicing this, is what we used to do is write a business plan. 
A very nice document. It was a business plan as defined in the 21st century as the document that your investors made you write that they never read. I'm supposed to laugh here. This is Nick. It's Wait. a different sense of humor in this. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we're still writing business plans. And by the way, the best part of the business plan was a five-year plan, a forecast in the back, which forecasted essentially, if you think about it, for a startup, a series of unknowns. Now, what's interesting is a business plan makes all the sense in the world in a large company when you have a series of knowns. I know my customers. I know my channel. Here's my next product. I could write a business plan. The mistake we made was taking that same document and trying to apply it for a series of unknowns. Now, I have to remind you, the only people who had five-year plans with a series of unknowns who required five-year plans that way were venture capitalists in the Soviet Union. And we know how well they turned out for at least one of those uh, groups. And I'm not suggesting we don't need planning. I am suggesting that the process ended up doing some absurd things. Here's what happened. When you would write a business plan and you'd get money from an investor, they would look at that five-year forecast, and then you would have board meetings. And in Silicon Valley, we'd have board meetings every six weeks. And they'd ask you, how are you doing per plan? Compared. You were supposed to execute that plan. It didn't matter that you were getting new data from customers that said the plan was obsolete. The board funded that plan. You would ship the product and you'd have a launch party. Everybody would be happy. And then a couple of months later, people would be asking the VP of sales, how are we doing per plan? And the VP of sales would always say, great pipeline. Now, for those of you who've never done that, great pipeline means we really don't have any sales. It's coming. It's going to come, but don't worry. And this would repeat multiple board meetings until one day the board would fire and the CEO would fire the VP of sales. That's a pivot, isn't it? Why? We're not executing the plan. And so we would continue a new VP of sales would say, well, that was a stupid plan. Here's the new plan. By the way, when they said here's a new plan, we were actually doing a pivot. And this would continue for another six months. And if it still wasn't working, we'd fire the VP of marketing. Why? Because it can't be the VP of sales' problem. It's the VP of marketing. And the new VP of marketing would come in and say, well, here's the new positioning. We just did another pivot. And then finally, if we're still not making money or not meeting our plan, we fire the CEO. Now, if you think about this, the one thing we never fired was the plan. Mm -hmm. It's a big idea. The one thing we never said is perhaps our initial assumptions were incorrect. Yet we now know after doing startups for 30 or 40 years, it's the very rare startup, very rare startup that gets the initial assumptions correct. And therefore, the business model canvas and the lean methodology says, hey, those are the things we're changing first. We fire the plan first before we fire the people. That's a big idea. And that's why uh, this whole lean methodology makes people from large companies incredibly uncomfortable. In fact, it's why large company executives and sometimes why government officials who need certainty have a hard time understanding the uncertain nature of early stage ventures. By definition, they're unstable and unknowns. We're solving for multiple unknowns. Uh, this is actually a good point to dive into some local material. Yep. Uh, a lot of the angels in Turkey are asking questions about ROI and EBITDAs and five-year financials and so on. And what I'm recommending to our entrepreneurs is if they have an investor that wants those types of things, uh, come to me. I have a group of creative writers who can create wonderful pitch decks and you know, just give them what they want. So maybe a lesson for angel investors, do not treat startups like you would treat uh, mature companies. So that brings up an, another subject, which by the way, used to confuse me when I uh, retired as an entrepreneur and started teaching, I, I thought entrepreneurship was pretty well defined. That is, everybody knew what an entrepreneur was. It was somebody who wanted to start a billion dollar business or go broke. And, and one of my mentors at uh, Berkeley suggested that Steve, perhaps you ought to sit in for some other entrepreneurship classes and see what they're teaching. And I sat through those classes and realized that their definition of entrepreneurship was very different than mine. So what were they doing wrong? Well, no, they weren't doing, actually, in this case, a very rare event, I was wrong. <laughs> it turns out 
And and this is true in every country, and Turkey in, in particular, it's worth thinking about. It turns out the word entrepreneur and startup means different things to different people. Mm. Yeah. And this really screws up investors, governments, and educators without having a taxonomy that is a, a, a kind of a set of buckets about what kind of startups are we talking about. Let me give you a set of examples. Now, there's a certain type of entrepreneur, which I call a lifestyle entrepreneur, uh, maybe more uh, prevalent in the United States. But these are people whose life really isn't about startups. Their life is about something else. I happen to live near the ocean, um, and some of my friends are surfers. And if they could, they would surf 